a lot is on the table and a big question for bishops across the United States. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops meets in Baltimore this week with an agenda that includes prayer, dialogue about Ukraine and the Eucharistic revival. And of course, a vote for the new conference president, and Vice President. Joining us now with more from Baltimore is Executive Editor of EWTN News, Dr. Matthew Bunsen. Dr. Bunsen, great to be with you as always. A full week ahead for our bishops, that's for sure. Let's talk more about that and the top issues on the table this year. Well, it's, as you mentioned, uh, the, the big ticket item, so to speak, is the election of not just the president, but also the vice president for the conference. Uh, we have a normal pattern that the vice president tends to assume uh, the role of president, but that's not possible this year because the vice president, uh, Archbishop Alan Vigneron of Detroit, uh, will be too old. He'll be over 75 uh, in, the, in terms of uh, his term. Uh, so we have two open spots and about 10 or so candidates uh, all lining up uh, as possible successors to Archbishop Jose Gomez of Los Angeles. On top of that, we also have the election of six new committee chairs, I believe including religious liberty. But then there are a host of other issues uh, for our time, including the question of abortion and, and how the bishops are going to respond to the midterms, but also the post-Dobbs era. Uh, we're also looking, as you noted, too, at the Eucharistic revival and, and uh, some possible causes for canonization. So it's a very full agenda for the bishops here. Yeah, indeed. Sounds like for sure. And as you mentioned, uh, the Supreme Court's reversal on Roe last summer really sure to be a talking point. Um, how do you see that decision affecting the bishop's approach to pro-life matters going forward? Well, that's a really important question and one that they've uh, been trying to address since uh, the Dobbs decision back in June. Uh, the bishops are certainly cognizant of the fact that the pro-life movement suffered five defeats uh, in different ballot measures and amendments in this uh, most recent midterm. And they're pushing ahead with, I think, two things. The first is uh, making sure that Catholics everywhere know clearly what Catholic teachings are on abortion. Uh, that, uh, of course, uh, is something that we have to reiterate, but also they want to stress again the preeminence of abortion as the, the issue of our time. Uh, but uh, they're also looking, as they have since uh, the overthrow of uh, Roe v. Wade, uh, looking at the pastoral care uh, for children, but also for mothers. They're looking at the need for a, a culture that really does care for uh, both. And that, I think, is something that we'll be hearing from Archbishop uh, William Laurie. Uh, Baltimore, who will be speaking to the uh, the bishops in the coming days, uh, that stress again on pastoral care, but also that building a culture of life. Really, what they see are opportunities post row, despite uh, how some of the votes turned out uh, the midterms. And Matthew, I'm curious. Do you expect the bishops to to delve into hot button political issues such as immigration, and if so, um, to what extent? Well, I think uh, one of the things that we can all circle uh, in their discussions uh, is going to be what they want to do with the, one of the key documents that they've issued over recent years, and that is uh, forming uh, consciences for faithful citizenship. The faithful citizenship document uh, was the source of some controversy and real debate uh, at, on the floor of the bishops' meeting several years ago. Uh, in this case, I think the, the question that's before them is what they want to do with it as we're heading now uh, very swiftly into what will be a presidential campaign in just two years. Uh, do they want a new document? Uh, do they want to revise the one that they have? Do they want summaries of it to go out? Uh, I think we're going to hear quite a number of different opinions on what they need to do with it and, and uh, whether or not abortion in the view of some bishops should remain the preeminent issue or uh, should it be one of a number of issues. I expect a, a, a very lengthy debate among the bishops. We'll see if they accomplished any of that in their executive session. They were behind closed doors today. Uh, we'll know a lot more once they actually start talking about this. Matthew, we probably have a, a little bit more than a minute left or so, but I'm curious, um, do you know who is expected yeah. to be the ne next president of the USCCB? Well, trying to handicap uh, any election uh, is very difficult, especially one involving bishops. Uh, we hear a lot of different names uh, as uh, potentially strong candidates, uh, but we also have to be very careful about uh, predicting things. Uh, these can be very, very difficult to gauge, as I was saying. Uh, but one thing that uh, we do need to take a moment uh, to address, and that is the outgoing president of the conference, and that's Archbishop Jose Gomez, whose tenure has been marked by political rancor in the country, real division and polarization. But he 
has worked over his time as uh, president here to build a consensus. We saw that uh, in the controversy surrounding the bishop's uh, Eucharistic documents so uh, just last year. And the way that uh, the archbishop, as president of the conference, really worked to build a consensus among his brother bishops in how they should address the question of Eucharistic coherence, Eucharistic consistency, especially for politicians. It has been a remarkable term uh, for Archbishop Gomez, and, and I really think we need to thank him uh, for the work that he's put in under very difficult circumstances, even among some of his brother bishops. Absolutely, indeed. And it sounds like it's going to be a very busy and very interesting week ahead. Thank you so much, Dr. Bunsen. Always appreciate it.